Now, in Shakespeare, most of us don't worry about these points. And in other plays where there are unexplained things, we just think they're a mistake. And, I mean, we also don't know in Hamlet whether he's had his breakfast or um, has made Ophelia pregnant or if he's gay or there are lots of things we don't know. But a play isn't a story of real people whose lives have all these other things going on. It's about real people, but only within those things we see. So if the actress wants to know why to make up for her own satisfaction, for her own creativity, why Gertrude didn't save Ophelia, that she was afraid of it, that she was in a coma like the people in... No, not in seriously, but uh, whatever the reasoning she wants, she can have. But Shakespeare's not dealing with that. If Shakespeare wanted a speech about her guilt, about her fears, about her not being able to move to save Ophelia, he'd have written that. You can imagine that there is, if you like, a play covering all of these things and that it's been edited like a piece of film so that we don't actually see any of that. But then that would affect the way you say things. Really, it's just not in the play. All you have to do, or we have to do, is act what's in the play. Except that, in the case of Harold Pinter, when these strange things happen, they're not passing things while some other a great dramatic moment goes on. They are the centre of the play. The secret, at the risk of making you all scream, is in a way that there isn't one. There is no other thing to work out. You do have to play the lines that are there, which ain't easy, which is why the greatest actors in the world have queued up to do these plays and been cast. Because if you're just going to have the opening line where you turn to someone who's been in bed for 29 years asleep and you say to her, even though the audience doesn't know what it means, do you know me? Or however you say it. You've got to try and find your reality. In, in, in lots of acting, we can get away with something that's approximately the truth, and the audience will fill it in and make sense of it. But you can't do that with Pinter. Well, you can, but ideally you do good acting for it. So, the play is about a woman who is told by a man who says he's a doctor that she's been asleep for 29 years. And she doesn't believe it at first. Her sister has married this doctor who has given her a drug which wakes her up. And if that sounds like a fairly simple story, well, it'd be simpler and easier to act if you had more background to it. And that's the point. It's as simple as that. When somebody says, uh, yesterday was the worst day I've had in my entire life. Or when somebody says, yesterday was the best day I've had in my entire life. We take the point, we marry it into other lines in the scene, but unless it's said with dismay or joy or horror or something, that's all there is. It's this extraordinarily intricate story of people on the edge. It's a bit like fairy tales that we don't know any more than that there are three bears in the middle of some house in the jungle. In the jungle. Red Riding Hood, wherever the hell they are. They're huge, big stories. And we mustn't try and add explanations to them. And then we may find that the ability to say, do you know who I am, will have huge ramifications. If you knew why there were funny notices on this wall, why I showed you this bloody room? I showed you the bloody room because I had a sense that I wanted you to know who I was, that this was coming from my home, that it wasn't just me lecturing against a, a brick wall or a screen. And I wanted you to know I was in New York. But now I tell you that, you now know that about me. It was much better that I just didn't say anything. And then it was just, it had the effect of your realising that this was my place, perhaps and that I was wanting to make this film in my place. But you didn't go around thinking about that. It just had its effect. And when uh, Claudius, at the end of the play, uh, cries out to his wife, uh, do not drink, because the chalice is poisoned and it's been meant for Hamlet, and 
if his wife drinks it, she will die and everything. It's, it's unexpected, it's unexplained, there are no other speeches about it. And it's from nowhere and quite difficult to do without it being slightly funny or slightly unbelievable. And these lines have an importance. Now there's one last thing I have to tell you, which is this. Harold Winter made one other remark about this play. There were films made of these patients of the epidemic waking up after 50 years. These films are still available, I think, for public access in medical libraries in New York and London. Quite astonishing. They must be. I haven't seen them, but people waking after 50 years and thinking that they'd just been asleep for an hour. What did they look like when they realised they'd been asleep for 50? And, and then they get talking. Now, as I get older, I find myself being a little bit more careful about what I want to do, what I can be bothered to say. But if I'd been asleep for 50 years, so I didn't really have any recent past to talk about, except some interest in this sickness, but as I might fall asleep again in five minutes, for all I know, I don't want to waste too much time talking about that. What am I going to say? Supposing I also know I'm going to be dead definitely within a year. I'm going to use my time carefully. And Harold said this other thing about this play. He said when he saw the films, he said, these people talk, these people in these films waking up, these people talk like all the characters in all my plays, not just in this one. So I think he was referring to the fact that any word they say is deliberate, is important. That's it. I've, I've looked after a few people who are on the way to dying soon. Things have an extra importance. And because Harold Pinter doesn't add other things, it is the importance of the lines. I've spoken about in another film of the, the extremeness of Shakespeare, of how all the plays deal with the most extreme, ghastly, extreme emotions and ghastly situations and horrors. People who have lost their loved one and they commit suicide and their parents oh, don't understand. The complications of horror, the perfect storms of horror and comedy. And in Pinter, there's a, a perfect storm of, well, Maybe you're thinking by now, maybe you can find a better word than me while I dither around here on the film. Some specialness, some a, special, a perfect storm of, of only wanting these facts. Yesterday was the worst day that I've had for at least 20 years. Yesterday was the best day I have had for at least 20 years. I think that I can do those lines in the way that Pinter would require, but only because I happen to know what those lines mean. It's like people who've never seen a dead body acting a scene about one. Well, they, they, you know, they can't do it, not in the same way. But they can find a parallel. We won't know if they find whole oh, parallel things of acting you either know about or I'll deal with in another film. But, 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 but. Fortunately, dear Harold has said that this is how all his plays are. So just take the, take the weight off your shoulders when you're looking at Beckett or Olbe or... Mamet or Beckett, who I think is on a higher plane. Sorry to be rude. And that's it. The ghost in Hamlet comes out and just tells his son that he was murdered and that he's in hell and that he wants his son to revenge for him. But he doesn't go into explaining any of those. He just says them all. It may help the actor say them if he thinks of the fact that he loves his son and he's come from hell and he wants to talk to him and he wants to live his terrible death and so on. But it's just to help the line. It's not so that he can show he loves his son and he wants to be near him. And it's anything that helps you say the lines, yes, but nothing else. And then I think Shakespeare and Beckett 
and Pinta turn out to be extraordinary. And you can see, well, wait a minute, this play is just about a woman who wakes up, who's been asleep for 29 years. And she, we don't know anything else. We don't know if it's horrific or amusing or a good thing, or that's all we know. Once upon a time, there was a woman. She'd been asleep for 29 years since the age of 16. And she was given a drug and she woke up. And she looked around herself and she'd been perhaps a little bit awake at some time during the 29 years or aware of something because she then says her first line her first line her first words after 29 years what are they going to be? Jesus loves me I'm awake did you remember to turn the light off? I'm hungry. God, I could do with a drink. Where's my mummy? No. Her first words. After 29 years. It's gold. It's gold for an actor. Her first words are... Something's happening. Now you can throw the line away. You can say, something's happening. Do you know me? Uh, I don't know what's going on. Do you recognise me? Uh, and it can be mundane. Or it can be huge. That's what Harold Pinter is.